Hi everyone, this is Ryan Reagan, the founding partner and the econ course director at HXL. So if you're watching this video right now, I suppose you're struggling with your econ and you're confused. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to teach you exactly step by step how to get a level 7 in your econ IA. In the past seven years, we've helped hundreds of thousands of students to get a 7. Okay, so let's get started and don't miss out. So in the past seven years, actually, we have recorded a lot of IB economics uh, IA videos. They received over 100,000 views, helped a lot of students. Okay, so these videos, a lot of them are still applicable today. Okay, so here you can see, for example, we have microeconomics video and then uh, international macro and then we got one for development as well so a lot of these videos are still applicable but then the syllabus have slightly changed so I'm going to explain to you how the syllabus have changed and how you can change your uh, change the approach okay so yeah so there's this new econ IA syllabus the new econ IA syllabus starts this year so if you're graduating in 2022 then this video will be uh, relevant to you but if you're graduating in 2021 then uh, then you don't need to pay attention to this video because you're still doing your old syllabus, all right? So the new econ syllabus, you need to do three IAs just like before. But then now, each of your IA needs to be on a different key concept, okay? So there are eight key concepts, okay? Interdependence, scarcity, choice, efficiency, equity, economic well-being, sustainability, and intervention, okay? So to make things simple for you, here's what I would suggest you to do, okay? For your IA number one, you can use the old micro i video that we made okay that video had uh, over 1500,000 views and it's about cigarette indirect tax okay so you can use that video to write your micro i and you can link it to the key concept of government intervention okay the second video i would suggest you to do it on micro macroeconomics macro okay so in this video i'm going to uh, teach you how to write this i for your macroeconomics i okay because the old macro IA video I made is also about intervention, but that you can't do that, right? Because you can't have two IAs on intervention. So that's why I made this new video. Uh, and in, in the rest of this video, I'm going to teach you how to write your IA on the theme of equity, focusing on macroeconomics. Then for your third IA, you can follow the development uh, IA video I made before. And you can focus on the key concept of economic well-being. Okay? So I will put... So if you, if you want to find the links to the micro IA or for your development IA, you can go to the description. Okay, in the description you will find the links. But if you're if you want to focus on your macro IA, then uh, in the rest of this video I'm going to teach you how to write your macro IA for the new syllabus. Okay, and the theme would be equity. Okay, so this so I'm going to teach you how to find the right article first, and then I'll teach you exactly paragraph by paragraph what to write for your macro econ. IA. Okay, make sure you don't plagiarize it, but it'll be an extremely good reference for you. Okay, I, actually, I picked an article that as, as a sample, but you, you, you should pick your di a different article, okay? But you can use my work as a sample. Okay, so how to write an article? So go on news.google.com, search income inequality, okay? This is, the, this is the keyword that I think will get you relevant articles, okay? So you want to find the right article. You need to open one article at a time to see if they are good articles. So What's a good article? So I think you need to make sure the article is not an opinion piece because sometimes you get this these articles that are like It's basically somebody's opinion. It's not news. Okay, you want to find something that's more like a piece of news, okay? And ideally the article should have useful data in it. Okay, it relates to income inequality and it also focuses primarily on one country Okay, because that will make it easier for you so here is an example of an article that I think will be good. Okay, so you can find a similar article. I'm going to put this the link to this article in the description on YouTube. Okay, and um, another thing is that um, for the remainder of this video, I'm going to teach you how to write an IA based on an article like this. Okay, so what's this article about? It's basically about how income inequality in India have continued to rise, but in China. Uh, income inequality have stabilized okay so the point here is that yeah and, and that also talks about how there's more poverty in India as well and then it compares it with the income inequality in other countries so basically the conclusion of this article is is there are some data and then it says that uh, global inequality so so countries with strong investment in public services and welfare have lower inequality levels. So the idea is that governments can do something to reduce the inequality. Okay, and India has more inequality than other countries. So that's basically the gist of this article.
let's just quickly look at the rubric requirements. Okay, so first, uh, the first requirement is you need to have clearly labeled diagrams, fully labeled diagrams of a good title, and that's worth three marks. And then terminology, so you need to define the key economic terms throughout the your IA. Okay, that's worth two marks. And then application analysis, basically you need to apply economic theories. You need to explain economic theories in your IA, and that's worth three marks. And then next is you need the next requirement is called key concept. Basically, you need to link your IA to a key concept. Okay, so for example, in this case, the key concept is income equity. Okay, so you need to uh, so you need to make enough references in your IA to the key concept to get these three marks. The last requirement is uh, evaluation. It's worth three marks. Okay, so now we're going to go through an essay outline together, and then you will see exactly how to write a level seven IA. Okay, so here's what I believe your essay should, should be like. Okay, in the first paragraph, you want to briefly summarize the article in like one sentence. And then you want to define the terms in the article that are that are relevant to the article, the economic terms. And you want to link the article to the key concept. So explain why this article is related to your key concept. Okay. Paragraph two and three, you want to draw a fully labeled diagram and explain it well. Okay, so the, the diagram should be related to some sort of economic theory related to the article. Okay, paragraph four, uh, because the article we chose is about income inequality, you want to link income inequality with income inequity because the theme, the major economic theme we're exploring is equity, right? But there is this difference between equity and equality. Okay, so equality is about whether income is evenly distributed, and then equity is about whether the economy is fair. Okay, so because even in a fair economy, different people will have different incomes. It's it's an inevitable thing, right? But then, so we're going to explore the relationship between inequality and inequity. Okay, so this because. Because our article is about inequality, right? And we will, our key concept is inequity. There's a relationship between these two concepts. Okay, so we want to establish that in paragraph four. I'm going to show you how um, how to do it later. Okay, then paragraph five, you want to talk about the policy choices to tackle the issue of inequity. And then paragraph six and seven, you can evaluate the policy responses. So you talk about the advantages and disadvantages. And then finally, in paragraph eight is your conclusion. So paragraph one is basically your introduction, introductory paragraph. Okay, so in your, so first you can briefly summarize the article. You should do this in one sentence. Okay, so I would say something like this: that this, the article discusses the issue of income inequality in India in comparison to other countries, and the issue of growing poverty in India. Okay, so this is what I would say, and I would define income inequality because obviously, that is um, that. A major economic term. So income inequality refers to how income is unevenly distributed amongst the population. That's the definition. Okay. Then you should say the con the key concept of equity will be discussed in this essay. Okay. Because you need to link your IA to a key concept, right? So this is why I would say that. Okay. In your micro IA as well, you should you, you, you want to link your link uh you want to say this okay so, so you know state clearly what is the key concept you're you will be discussing. Okay. Then you should define Equity. Okay, so you should say equity refers to fairness, the notion that everyone should be given an equal opportunity to succeed. Okay, so that's equity. So you see the difference between equity and equality. Obviously, there is a relationship, but it's not exactly the same. Okay, equality is how evenly income is distributed. Equity is how fair things are. Right, but then if so, the point here is that if there is very uneven distribution of income, if there is a lot of poverty, obviously there will be inequity as well. Right. Because people don't have access to education and so forth, right? So in paragraph two, we want to paragraph two and three. We're going to draw a diagram and explain it, right? So before you draw the diagram, it is very important. So this is this applies to any economic essay you write in the IB. So before you draw a diagram, you want to explain why you're trying the diagram. Okay, so here I would say. As mentioned in the article, while income inequality in China have stabilized, India's income inequality continue to rise. And I would say increasing income inequality can be illustrated by Lorentz curve. Okay, then I would draw this Lorentz curve. Okay, so uh, you should have learned this in the, in the syllabus. So the Lorentz curve basically shows on the y-axis the cumulative percent of income in the country, and on the x-axis cumulative percentage of population. So. So there is this 45 degree line is called the line of absolute equality. Okay, why? So for example, the lowest income 10% of the population has 10% of 
national income. The lowest per 50% has 50% of national income. So this is what this uh, 45 degree line show, right? So this is so this line actually illustrates a situation where income is equally distributed. Everyone has the same amount of income. Okay. So then the further so this this is the Lorentz curve shows the actual distribution of income, right? So for example. So the further away the Lorentz curve is away from the line of absolute equality, the more unequal the income is. So because the lower percentage, the lower income portions of the population will earn a smaller percentage of national income. So that's how you interpret the diagram. Okay. So paragraph three, I'm going to explain the diagram. So I would say something like this: As shown in the diagram, the Lorentz curve of India have shifted further away from the line of perfect of absolute equality. This means that the lower quintiles of the population earn a smaller percentage of national income. Okay, so this illustrates the situation that's talked about in the article. All right. So paragraph four, we want to link, because the article is about inequality, we want to link that to the concept of equity, right? So because the key, because look, in the rubric, we see that three points relates to the key concept. So it's whether or not you can link the issue that is discussed in the article to the key concept. So that's why paragraph four is so important. Okay, you want to link the situation of inequality in India to the notion of equity, right? So here, what you can say is, here's how I would say it. While there is a difference between income inequality and inequity, there is often a connection or a relationship, okay? So like mentioned in the article, poverty eradication have been slower in India relative to China okay so households with in poverty have access to fewer opportunities which leads to inequity right so you can give examples so for example households in poverty won't have access to basic health care and basic education and this would deprive them of our opportunities so this leads to uh, inequity in the economy right in the, in the society it's not fair right because so the lower income households don't get the same opportunities as the higher income. This happens in every society, right? Like, you know, in Hong Kong, if you're from a wealthy family, you go to a good school, you know, you have good health care, but those in, in lower income households, they, you know, they can't afford anything, right? So, yeah, so so what in a society where there's income inequality, this, this obviously leads to unfairness and equity, right? Paragraph 5, we want to start the evaluation portion. But before we start the evaluation portion, I, I think what we need to do is we'll explain that policies are required to alleviate this issue. And then we can go on to evaluate those policies. You get what I mean? Because in paragraph 5, the whole purpose of this paragraph is to talk about the policies that can help to alleviate this issue of inequity, unfairness. Okay. So I, this is how I would write it. I would say, as mentioned in the article, economic policies. So this is I quoted this from the article. Economic policies do matter, and lower in inequality levels can accelerate both poverty reduction and overall economic growth rates. And countries with strong investments in public service and welfare policies have the lowest inequality levels. So basically, the point here is that, yeah, it, policies make a difference when it comes to inequality and inequity. All right. Now, explain what are the policies that can be used. So. One type of policy that can be used is a progressive tax system where there is a have higher tax rate for the higher income households, right? So a more progressive tax system can help to uh, raise tax revenue as well. And this can be used for transfer payments, okay, where uh, transfer payments to lower income households. For example, unemployment benefits or pensions, right? And then you can say the higher taxes can also be used to invest in uh, public services like healthcare and education. This can help to provide more opportunities to the lower income households. So these are the kinds of policies that governments can use to help improve fairness in the economy. All right. Then paragraph six, you want to talk about the uh, now we want to talk about the advantages to such policies. So here's what you can say. So improving public services like healthcare and education, these can help to promote long-term economic growth, not only in equity. Why? Because when you promote healthcare and education, it improves the human capital. So the workers in the country becomes more productive, right? So this shifts the LRAS to the right, like shown here. And when you shift the LRAS to the right, there's long-term economic growth. You can draw and explain this diagram, okay? And then you can also say, okay, so progressive tax can help to raise necessary necessary tax revenue for such investments 
and then on the other hand, transfer payments can have an immediate impact on alleviating poverty and suffering of the lower income households. So transfer payment is more like a short term remedy, whereas investment in education is, is a long term solution to the to the issue of inequity. So in paragraph seven, we can focus on the disadvantages of the policies to promote equity. So you can say and you can say in your first sentence, like, okay, there are disadvantages to policies to promote inequity. So what are the disadvantages? Well, number one, when you have a more progressive tax system, this can have a negative impact on economic growth. This is actually the main problem, right? Because first of all, incentive for investments will be reduced, okay? Because with higher tax rates, it means that the return on investment will be lower. When there's less investment in the economy, economic growth will be reduced, right? And then it can also reduce the incentive for work and for entrepreneurship. Okay, entrepreneurship means like starting new businesses, right? Because when you have a higher tax rate for the rich, so like people have no have less of an incentive to get rich. You get what I mean? Like in countries like Canada, where there's a very high tax rate, right? So people feel like um, even if they work hard, they will be taxed very heavily. So they they don't have as much as an incentive to work hard. Whereas even if they are lazy or if they don't work that hard, they, they still get a lot of benefits from their government. So people generally lose as, lose incentive. So that is like the biggest argument against these policies, right? So you can say like incentive for work and entrepreneurship can be reduced if uh, there is a more progressive tax system and if there's there are more transfer payments. So this can shift the LRAs to the left and have a negative impact on the economy, right? And then furthermore, Investments in healthcare and education, if they are excessive and inefficient, they can lead to a budget deficit, threatening the long-term uh, financial future of the country. Right. So basically, the point here is that there's an, you can also say there's an opportunity cost to such investments. Okay. So this is the paragraph on the disadvantages to such policies. So paragraph eight is like your final evaluation paragraph and also a conclusion. Okay. So here's what I would say in the conclusion. Okay, so first I would say policies to promote equity will benefit lower income segments of the population while having a negative impact for the higher income households. So this is about different stakeholders. You know, the lower income will benefit, but the higher income will suffer as a result, right? So I, and then I would say, in the short run, transfer payments can help alleviate poverty, but it will be important for India to strike a careful balance between promoting equity and maintaining incentives necessary for economic growth. So it's, it's about striking a balance between these two. Right? So ha having a tax system where people still have incentive to work and strive for improvement, but at the same time uh, helps to promote equity. Okay, So this is a challenge for all countries, in fact. And then I would, I would also say investment in human capital is vital for in promoting equity. In the short run, it can lead to a budget deficit, but in the long run, it will promote both growth and equity. So Investment in human capital should be one of the priorities for the India government. Okay, so this is what I would say. Okay, so I hope that you find this this video is useful. Okay, um, so you can basically I have laid out all the framework for you on how to do your econ I. If you need help on any IB subjects, just book a free trial lesson or trial lesson in the in the um, in, in in the link in the description. Okay, you'll find a lot of useful links in the description. So see you next time.